My name is Peter Scott. I work at the University of Saskatchewan Library and I have recently compiled a program which I call High Telnet, which is a program designed to give you instant access to all the available internet library sites. I begin by loading the program, which we'll do at the DOS prompt. The program can, of course, be loaded uh, through a menu system or in your autoexec batch file. So we will just move to the directory which contains the program. To invoke the program, we type in HR, which is the command to call up the hyper-res program, which actually runs the utility. You'll notice here that uh, it just brings up a screen naming the uh, designer and author of hyper-res, which is the driver for this. And the hotkey is displayed there, which is control backspace. Keying in those two keys brings up the first screen of the utility. You'll notice that um, we have a highlighted word here, what is, surrounded by a right and left angle bracket. That's the hypertext link. And that is what links all the various screens together, which enables us to move through the program anywhere we wish to go. If we want to see what is in the what is file, we just hit the right arrow key, which brings up the file what is. And in this case, that just basically gives a brief summary of what the program itself does. You'll notice at the bottom of that particular screen are two other hypertext links, one which leads to a file which explains how to customize the program, which we will look at. That very briefly explains how we will customize some of the files or any of the files in the program, and we'll show that later on. The next highlighted file is the word sites. By hitting again the right arrow, we are now in the sites file, as we can again see down here, and we're presented with more hypertext links. Before we go any further and actually look at some of the sites, Let's uh, see how we get back to where we came from. We were hitting the right arrow key to get this far. If we start to hit the left arrow key, then we can start to move back through the various screens until we come back to the start text. There's a help screen that can be invoked anytime by hitting the F1 key. And the help screen just gives an indication of which commands to use to browse through the program. And I'll be showing these as we actually look at some of the site screens. So we will hit the left arrow to get back to the start text file. If we arrow down to the last link on that first screen, it's indicating that we can go to the README file, which explains in more detail uh, about the program, how much memory it takes, some history of the program. This is version 2, so I'm just given some information on what's new. Notice at the status line here, we are being shown screen 1 of 5. To browse down, one can either push the page down key, which takes us through one page at a time, or we can use the plus key to browse one line at a time. And once again, remember that we can hit the F1 key at any time if we get stuck. Here's an explanation of how we scroll up and down with the plus and minus keys. We will leave that screen by hitting the left arrow and go back to where we left off. Let's go and look at how the site file connects us up to other files within the utility. By hitting the right arrow key, we come to the file called sites. 
What you're seeing here, first of all, are the hypertext links which lead you to the various countries that are represented uh, as having internet accessible sites. If we scroll down to Canada, we then hit the right arrow key, which then brings up the file called Canada, which lists various sites which are accessible in this country. So if we pick one of these files to look at, for instance, the University of Calgary, we hit the right arrow key, and we are given the instructions as to how to connect to the University of Calgary's online catalog by using the telnet command on your VAX system. Also included are other logon instructions. Each system, of course, is different, and each has its own logon requirements and log-off requirements. If you're familiar with Telnet, then you will know that there is an escape key which can be used if you get stuck while you're in a site and the system hangs you or your own system hangs you, then you can get out very quickly. So that screen very simply tells us how to get in and out of the University of Calgary's catalogue. There are, in fact, only three sites accessible at the moment. Medina and the Tri-State Online will be available later this year. Let's see uh, what the Cleveland Freenet file says. Here's the Telnet command to connect. And as soon as one is in that system, we are presented with the logo of the Cleveland Freenet. And we will browse down to the main menu. Two types of users can use the Freenet, registered users, or you can just drop in by the system and just pay a visit and see what's available at the Freenet. This is the main directory. And the Freenet, uh, without getting into too much detail, is a combined effort of the Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland Public Library in Cleveland, who got together to give the community in Cleveland access to the libraries, to the Usenet news service, to other internet accessible sites, and to special interest groups. The whole concept of the Cleveland Freenet is a city which is accessible through computers. There's an electronic mail facility that uh, members can use, a public square where messages can be left, like a massive bulletin board. There's information about legal matters. Also, the Cleveland Freenet, on a daily basis, receives the latest decisions from the Supreme Court as soon as they are issued. The Arts Building has things like book reviews, video reviews, film reviews, Science and Technology Center uh, is self-explanatory, as is the Medical Arts Building. The Schoolhouse is quite interesting because the people at the Freenet allow high school students to connect up to the Freenet. And in fact, as I am speaking in May of 1991, there is a uh, situation happening at the moment where students in Finland and in Cleveland are actually talking to each other through the chat facility of the Cleveland Freenet, which is quite interesting. The community centre is for posting bulletin messages about what's on in the city. The business and industrial park has uh, information regarding business and also certain software programs for computers like Lotus 123 information about the, the library at Case Western Reserve. The University Circle is also information about the university in its broader context. The teleport allows access to other internet sites, plus access to the Usenet news service. The communication center is where electronic mail can be sent, as well as from the post office. And there's also uh, a section for 
headline news from um, one of the American newspapers, which are pr printed every day on the Freenet. Archie is a particularly useful internet accessible site and what Archie does it allows you to find where particular software is residing on the internet that you can download from a remote site onto your local PC through the file transfer protocol. We've seen how the utility I wrote works, HiTelnet it wouldn't be possible without the driver itself, HyperRes. HyperRes is a very powerful but very simple to use utility and is available as shareware. And I'm now going to show you how you can edit and add files to a program such as HiTelnet very easily, very quickly and very effectively to create your own hypertext links and to add in another site. We'll just create another site and I'll show you how that's done. The HiTelnet program is always resident in memory until we actually decide to remove it from memory. We can temporarily exit by using the escape key because what I'm going to do is show you how you can add another file into the utility very quickly and very easily. And for this, we'll use QEdit, which is another shareware program, which is essential for this particular kind of work in that it's very fast and very powerful. So we will um, add a library, which we will call US999. which is called the University of Somewhere. Now we just imagine that in the body of the text are the login instructions, logout instructions and so forth. So we will save that and we'll just quit the program. Now let's call up our files and see where that new file is now sitting. We'll come down to the United States screens. And we'll notice that there isn't a university of somewhere. So we just need to edit the file called UNSTATS, which is very easy to do. We'll do QUNSTATS, and we'll just find a place to put that file. We'll just put it in here. This could be done quicker, but I'm just a terrible typist and I'm very slow. We'll save that and we will quit and we'll invoke the program again. Now it's not immediately there, of course, because that screen was up already, but if we just exit and re-enter and page down, we will find the University of Somewhere. And we had already created that file, so if we hit the right arrow key, there's our information on the University of Somewhere. To show how easy it is to, um, to create hypertext information programs, I'd just like to show a program that I'm currently working on, which is a directory of electronic mail conferences. We'll now call up the uh, file that I'm currently working on and it has a temporary name of HiDirect. We will invoke it again with the HR command 
and the control backspace to bring it up. Now you notice this screen is more or less the same as the Hytelnet screen, which just indicates again that uh, it's very easy to edit the program because the files are written in pure ASCII. Conferences in the social sciences and humanities. So here we see a slightly different uh, file that I wrote just to show that it can all be on this side of the screen. So here are the ASCII files representing this particular subject. So if we want to see which are the email conferences that have anything to do with art, then we can hit the right arrow key. And notice that here are listed some of the BitNet conferences that people can join. Here's a conference on Japanese anime media and other animation news. That's a very brief entry. This is rather larger, it gives information about who the editor is. We'll page down. All of these files are to do with art. I hope you've enjoyed that uh, brief look at how you can use hypertext technology in your library to create directories and information systems. And in particular, I hope you've enjoyed looking at the Hytelnet utility, which gives you instant access to all the internet accessible sites. And we have brought along copies of the program, which you can take away with you and practice on your own personal computer and connect up to some of the internet sites and see what is available through the internet, either the free nets, university library catalogs, campus-wide information systems, and so on. Thank you very much for your interest and attention.